Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. Today's YouTube video is going to be another cafe sketch. But I want to make this video a little bit different by talking about why I enjoy doing so many cafe sketches. So over the past one year, I've been you know, going out there a lot. Uh, a lot of my sketches were done at cafes. And so the main reason that I liked to sketch in cafes is that I always get a really comfortable place to sit down. There's always a chair or a couch and a nice and big table to lay out all of my materials, my sketchbook, my pen and brushes, especially my metallic watercolor palette. So um, if I'm sketching at a park, most of the time I have to put my sketchbook um, on my lap and also uh, the slightly heavy uh, uh, watercolor palette. So um, it's just so much easier and having less burden by sitting down very comfortably at the cafe. It's like a real workstation there. Another reason is that I really love drawing people and different gestures. And cafes and restaurants are always great places to see different types of people, people all ages, uh, from different cultures, uh, engaged in conversations. People at cafes, they always seem to be pretty happy and cheerful. And so they're very inspiring to be sketched. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you this cafe sketch that I did at Honolulu Coffee at Falls Creek in, in Vancouver. Right here, this one. Let's go. The next station is Main Street Science World. So the Honolulu Coffee is about 10 minutes walk from the SkyTrain station. I love this area of Vancouver. It's called Olympic Village. So the 2010 Winter Olympics uh, was, t was taking place here in Vancouver. Here I'm outside the cafe. It's my first time visiting here. Yeah, very happy vibes in here. Love the tropical colors on the walls. So I ordered a cup of latte and the breakfast wrap. So including food in my art journal pages um, is a very important way for me to keep track of my life memories uh, because these are more than just mere imageries of uh, these food and drinks. Uh, food is actually a great part of my life memories. A lot of my childhood memories were actually related to um, homemade food and snacks bought from my local um, grocery stores or little markets. Okay, so I just drew my cup of latte. If you want to know how to sketch a cup of latte, you can check out my other cafe sketch videos. Now I'm ready to draw uh, my, bre my breakfast wrap, the first half. So roughly it is in between a cylinder and a rectangular prism. By knowing its three dimension, I'm able to draw more accurately and more expressively. Now drawing the filling, there are a lot of grains inside and the cut on the surface is always following the curve, the surface curve of the cylinder. So now drawing the other half, a very nice curve. It's closer to a cylinder and this, uh, this cut over here on the surface is following the round surface curve of a cylinder, adding some final accentuation and that's it for the line work part. Now I'm ready to add watercolors very quickly before these things get cold. So just wetting the wrap area and the coffee areas with clear water. So the watercolors could spread out very easily and quickly. Putting on um, a diluted yellow ochre, mix it with uh, medium yellow or cadmium yellow, same for the coffee. Now second layer wet into wet, burn sienna with a little orange to get a little bit of contrast and variety in colors. And same for the wrap, they have similar colors and tones. It's a mix of burnt sienna and yellow ochre and a little bit of uh, cadmium yellow. Just play around with those yellows to keep the colors clean. And 
keep adding some more contrast with stronger tones containing less water or more concentrated paint. This is more of a burnt sienna and then more raw umber on the very top around here for the tortilla surface. And quickly painting the ceramic little dish is this the mix of lime green and a little bit cerulean blue. Being aware of those little patches of highlights and just skipping those areas, making those areas unpainted to show the shine of ceramics. And same for the cup. When I'm painting, my brush stroke is always following the surface curve to give the painting more energy. Adding some final accentuation around the edge of the coffee with darker browns. Painting the shadow with my own mix of gray. I mix my own gray with um, blue and royal purple and a tiny bit of green. Second layer is more concentrated around the edges. Some final polish to make the cup a little bit stronger. That's it. Here's the look of my finished sketch. Took me about 10 minutes or so to do. After eating, I'm ready to sketch the interior in front of me. It's very quiet. And I really hope um, there will be someone coming in soon so I could include him or her in my sketch. All right, so here comes a lady. Finally, it's been a while. And um, so I'm starting to draw the contour outline of her face. It's a side view and um, she's wearing glasses drawing her upper body, the elbow. I can't really see her forearm because of the angle that I'm looking at her. Her purse, the belt holding her purse and the purse itself. And then finishing up her back and the bottom of her jacket, adding these folds on the surface of her jacket, her pants. So I just captured her gesture of um, getting some cash out of her purse and ready to pay for her order and also very happily chatting with the barista. And it seems like that she, uh, she comes here pretty often. And now there's another person coming in. Yeah, a younger girl in hoodies, just drawing the back view, only elbows. When we're looking at people from the back, we can't really see their forearms most of the time. And the folds of her jacket is following the surface curve of the upper body, which is a cylinder. And coloring her, coloring her hair with solid black ink. She's dark haired. And yeah. And waiting for another person. Before that, I just want to add the counter edge in front of the older lady. Paying attention to the angle of these two lines, they're going upwards towards the right. So all counters at cafes, restaurants, um, in your own kitchen, they're all uh, giant rectangular prisms with like two point perspectives. And then they just added the fridge in the very front. And now some smaller rectangular prism shapes that I see on top of the counter like the, uh, the coffee dispensers and the pastry shelf. Some more little thingies lining up along the countertop and adding the texture of the wooden planks. A bit of accentuation. And probably the menu over here. Okay, so now it's time to add another element that further helps to define the perspective in this space. These are the, uh, the lamps and they're all aligning on an invisible line going down towards the right. Following the, uh, the one point perspective of the right side of the counter. And now I'm just adding these pretty straightforward vertical lines for the wires holding these lamps and the light bulbs inside these hoods and the luminosity. Yeah, very symbolic. Okay, now I am seeing and connecting the stuff in the back of these lamps. So these are the pipes 
maybe for air conditioning or something. So these are very much like um, upside down cylinders, as you can see, one big one and one small one. Most of the objects in the world are made up of three basic geometrical shapes, uh, rectangular prisms and cubes, cylinders and spheres. Now I'm starting to draw this barista serving the ladies just to add a sense of narrative for this sketch that these two people are really interacting. And my focus is to capture the facial expressions of people, not the physical likeness of those people. Now I'm starting to add more items around the counter here. This is actually the top of a shelf or fridge here. And they have a house plant right there with plates. Starting to draw the menu boards, the large menu boards on the wall on the very back and using squiggles to show those little letters that I can't really read here from the distance. And those horizontal lines for the menu boards and all of those letters are going down towards the right following the, uh, the perspective. There's a vanishing point somewhere in the very middle of the back wall there on the right. And some more essential lines that helps to establish the sense of depth and perspective here. More straightforward vertical lines to show the wooden planks. Yeah, so this cafe interior is newly reno renovated. This used to be another cafe. So I worked as a preschool teacher, sub teacher, about four to five years ago. And I think the old cafe was affected by the pandemic. It shut down and then this Honolulu Coffee Company bought this building. Yeah, so as you can see, I'm adding these very tiny details. So when I'm drawing those little details, I don't worry about perspective because, uh, well, they don't really follow any of those perspective lines. Just relax and fill in those little blank spaces. Now there's another man uh, naturally walking with his baby stroller over here. I drew his uh, front view, shoulders, and he walked away very quickly. So I had to wait for another man to finish the rest of the body. And adding some more lamps, well actually a pipe over here, around the back wall. Another cylinder. And the ceiling area. Yeah, so it's very interesting that a lot of cafes, uh, they have different kinds of lamps. So here, this is another kind of lamp here. And the lamp hood is made of basket, very rustic, like Hawaiian style. And I just drew the light bulb in there, drawing the texture of the basket hood. Yeah, like rows and rows of uh, weavings. Yeah, so just summarizing the pattern of the weavings pretty quickly. And that's very much it. It's like a bell shape. And now drawing some more little structures around. There's like a tall house plant there on the little platform. So it's a really foreshortened view of the one or two platforms there. And yeah, the tropical house plant behind the man. Now I'm coming to the foreground area on the bottom left side to draw these uh, rustic kind of chairs, Hawaiian style. Yeah, so the chair is very much uh, like hollowed rectangular prisms. The same for the table. And writing down the name of the cafe just so I remember where I was many years later. Honolulu Coffee at Foss Creek, Olympic Village. And I'm kind of using my memory to finish this man holding onto the stroller. And more tables and chairs around him. Final accentuation. And that's it. 
Now I'm ready to have fun painting watercolors. So just wetting the whole area with clear water so the paint could spread out very easily and quickly. Now just adding the warm luminosity of the cafe interior usually is this mellow yellow glow on the ceilings and all the walls. This is a diluted lemon yellow and cadmium yellow. A bit of orangey glow for the lamp there. So as I always mention in my other YouTube videos, it's very important to start with the lightest tone. And yellow is actually the lightest tone of all colors. So we don't end up with um, muddiness in our painting. And yeah, so that's it for the first layer. Second layer, I'm ad adding this mix of lime green and a lot of cadmium yellow for the first wavy stripe over here. And the next layer contains more lime green. Very nice analogous colors. And the next stripe, it contains more varied than green, a darker tone of green. Yeah, so I love these colors and um, they make the, this interior so much more attractive, charming to look at. And I just paint, use yellow ochre to paint the, the floor and a little bit of uh, purple for the bit of shade around the higher part of the wall there. And orange mixed with a little bit cadmium yellow. Yeah, so a lot of areas have uh, similar colors or tones, just so the painting has more unity. Now it's time to add a bit of shade colors. So this is kind of like a metallic gray. So I, and I mix my own gray with blue and a little bit royal purple. and diluted gray to paint those shaded areas in the back. So when doing a painting, we're not only using the bright and vibrant colors, we do have to use these more muted shade tones to uh, make those vibrant colors even more powerful. If we are only using those bright and saturated colors, our painting might look fancy, but still it looks flat. So we need those uh, cold tones and um, a bit of unsaturated colors for like these bluish grays, purplish grays, and yeah, and some of those nice orange yellows for the floor and chairs and tables. Pretty nice balance of warm and cold colors here. And now it's time to add some more stronger contrast. Yeah, just finishing painting these house plants on the platforms and then more grays. Most people in the modern world, uh, they wear black gray jackets. But when, paint, when I'm painting these jackets, I'm skipping around and leaving some highlights to show the three dimension of their bodies. As you can see for these two ladies, yeah, so painting techniques are pretty easy. You just have to be aware of what you're really seeing and translate what you see into these simple techniques. And just paint it skin color with my mix of orange and red diluted with a lot of water. Adding some more greenish grays for the wall there on the right. Some final shade color for the tables and chairs and the counter edge. And that's very much it for this sketch. Thank you so much for watching this video, everyone. If you like it, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. I update my channel with two to three new videos every week. Here's the look of my finished sketch. It took me about one hour here on location. I will see you very soon next time. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.